All right, this is going to be a video on um, an example workflow on how you might use Frattenberg vehicles in your design process. Um, so this is um, the uh, roof surface skin of uh, a project that I did in architecture school um, where I was using solar radiance analysis to determine how to uh, place different um, panels onto my roof. And so in this case, uh, each panel is made up of, of these two layers, um, the, the top layer being a, a solar panel that collects energy from the sun, um, and this uh, second layer being this flexible membrane that's able to be deformed by wind uh, that moves these pistons and then energy is collected um, by that process, by kind of moving it from the wind. And so depending on how large this uh, opening in the panel was, uh, more of the wind would be able to be affect that, that panel. And so what I did is I just said, you know, areas where there's not a lot of sun anyway, um, open up that panel to be larger so that you get more of the wind power um, from that spot. So um, here I'm gonna show how I might do that instead of using, um, you know, these circles these different size circles, how you might actually use Brattenburg vehicles um, to kind of carve away material uh, along the surface of that roof um, to allow um, kind of more openings where there's less solar exposure. So here I've just kind of taken that solar uh, analysis, which was done originally uh, with Gecko, which got me these different um, solar exposure values for each one of these panels. Um, and I've unrolled that uh, using the U and V values um, into a plane because Brandberg vehicles work um, currently only in 2D. Uh, so this is going to be a simulation uh, of just Brandberg vehicles. Here they start along this edge. They're given an initial velocity in the X direction. Um, and then uh, all of their movement is based on this sensory field force, this sensor force. And so Really, they're looking at um, this kind of blurred version of, of the solar map. Uh, because they do respond to luminance values, um, we, want, we want to make sure that they're not responding to those very hard differences per panel. So I, I just took that into Photoshop and just you know, I took this and just applied some blur to it. Um, but here we can see, you know, they are kind of uh, being attracted to these areas of a lot of uh, uh, luminance values, which really corresponds to uh, less solar exposure, um, but that's that's what we really want. And also here, they're, they're um, congregating in this very hot spot as well. But you can see that the result that we get is not um, probably not what you would want to apply to your design. Um, and so that's where um, what's great about Quelia comes in, which is that you can apply um, not just kind of Brattenburg vehicle forces, which really act based on these um, two sensor locations. I'll probably explain this in a separate video. Um, but in this case, you know, each vehicle, which is positioned here, um, has these two sensors that are in front of it, on, on either side of it. And each sensor reads the luminance value of that uh, kind of, of, of the, the position underneath of it. And depending on the strength of that luminance, it's going to turn one wheel faster. And in this case, um, it's going to kind of turn towards brighter luminance values. Um, but we can also apply our, our agent forces as well. So let's see um, if I add in. So these are uh, the other forces that uh, through a lot of uh, trial and error, I, I figured out work pretty well um, to get me a result that I'm happy with. So let's rerun that simulation um, with these new forces, and I'll explain them as it goes. So in this case, um, I also have these seek forces um, so that they each um, Brattenberg vehicle uh, is seeking their corresponding position on the other side of this surface. Um, and this way, uh, if you remember before, they were kind of they would come around here and all kind of get congregated here, but I really like them to line up perfectly um, with their original start positions. And so that's what um, these seek forces are allowing me to do. And we could see we get a much more rational um, 
and you know objectively better looking and kind of probably more fabricatable um, pattern on the surface here. So you can see that they are still being uh, attracted to this uh, hot spot here, um, as well as um, these spots up here. Uh, you know, and it's it's um, they're being attracted here and not so much here, but they're still uh, traveling along that path because they're seeking uh, the corresponding positions over here. And you can see how that relates to the surface here. Um, so you can see that they um, are indeed being attracted to this area where there's less solar exposure down here, and even um, you know towards the middle of the structure where there's less solar exposure, they're they're being attracted, but they're um, more avoiding um, the areas where there's a lot of solar exposure, which is kind of this area. Uh, this area, um, and even here, you can see that they're attracted to this, um, you know, shadier spot over here. So I'll just run that simulation one more time so you get a nice um, look at it. And I'm going to actually view it in this way so that it's overtly clear what's going on. And All right. There you go. Let's give you one last look at that. They are indeed, um, you know, tending towards the areas where there's um, less solar exposure, while also maintaining a, a rational path and ending up um, essentially where they started, and, and almost completely tangentially to, to how they started as well. So there you go. Hopefully. Uh, that was useful and it gives you ideas for how you can incorporate um, the Brattenburg vehicle logic into your own projects as well. So thanks.